long-awaited moment for hydrogen may be here. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal, with a part one of a two-part series on hydrogen fuel cells. For decades, hydrogen was billed as a near-miracle fuel that emits only water. Thanks to climate change and geopolitical instability, its moment in the spotlight may have just arrived. Here at THG, we have long been bigger fans of hydrogen for powering vehicles than we are of EV cars. Here's why. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe and emits only water when burned. It's genius, making it a potential game changer for the fight to end automotive emissions. But not all hydrogen is produced the same way. So here's the descriptors based on color coding. Black and brown captured from coal or lignite and is the most damaging form of hydrogen production to the environment since the carbon monoxide and dioxide created during that process is not captured. Gray is generated from methane or natural gas in a process called steam reforming. The greenhouse gases produced during that process are not captured. Blue, light gray, hydrogen generated from steam reforming, but its carbon is captured and stored. Still as much as 20% of the carbon created during the process cannot be captured. Green is produced using electrolysis, a process which splits the energy from renewable sources from two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. It's as clean as can be, but it accounts for a tiny percentage of total hydrogen production today. After all the hype over EV cars, hydrogen is being hailed as a magical solution. Yet for years, it has been derided as a perennial fantasy and labeled as an earth shot. Many have eyed hydrogen's tantalizing potential as an abundant and pollution-free energy source for transportation and beyond. Jules Verne described a method in which water will one day be employed as fuel and write hydrogen and oxygen will furnish an inexhaustible source of heat and light in his 1874 novel, The Mysterious Island. Well, nearly 150 years later, hydrogen has dusted off the confinement to science fiction. But despite the straightforward chemistry involved in its production, the ascendance of hydrogen to the realm of a society-altering energy source remains elusive, and mostly for political reasons. Now, after decades of pilot projects and sporadic deployments, hydrogen appears on the cusp of economic viability and widespread use. Spurred by the simultaneous global challenges of climate change and increased desires for energy independence, Governments and multinational companies are spending billions to usher in a hydrogen era. To that, I say hallelujah. Yeah. Matt Thorrington, engineering manager of fuel cells for global supplier Bosch, said it's finally happening. Adding this year, it will invest as much as $591 million in hydrogen production technology by the end of the decade. Transportation accounts for 27% of greenhouse gas emissions in the U.S. currently, more than any other sector, according to the EPA, the main U.S. efforts to fight carbon emissions in transportation focuses on battery electric vehicles and financially supplemented efforts to support that ecosystem. But that may not be enough. Kristen Ringland, a global mobility analyst at Ernst & Young, said, There are things that don't work well with batteries. Mm -hmm. Although there's no consensus as of yet, there's an increasing number of industry analysts and scientists who believe transportation will require both battery electric vehicles and hydrogen powered ones to reach a net zero carbon emissions goal by 2050. 2050? Well, that sounds a whole lot more realistic than some of the projections we hear tossed out there. Sure. Rod Borup, program manager of the Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technologies Lab said, we don't see this as a either or, we see it as a and. It was the energy crisis of the Carter administration that set this research in motion. Many modern day efforts to develop and deploy hydrogen and fuel cells for cars and trucks started at Los Alamos, which gained prominence for its development of the hydrogen bomb and where Borup now oversees the laboratory's longest running non-weapons program. Those efforts began in the aftermath of the economic shock and long gas lines that beset America in 1973 and 1974 with President Carter at the helm OPEC banned petroleum exports to select nations and cut oil production. Wow, that brings back memories of gas lines and gas coupons. Yeah, and what's going on right now? Federal law created the U.S. Energy Department in 1977, in part as a response to the energy crisis. That brought disparate research projects into the purview of national laboratories, including Los Alamos, where Byron McCormick, a young scientist three years removed from the University of Arizona, established the Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technologies Lab. It was a fortuitous timing. The Energy Department seeded research into solar, wind, advanced batteries, and fuel cells, 
although it took decades for those technologies, they have finally matured. McCormick, who later became a GM executive, said, All that stuff has been building since the 70s. It might not have started if not for the oil embargo. <laughs> McCormick built GM's Global Alternative Propulsion Center, which focused on hydrogen and fuel cell technology before retiring in 2009. His work took root. In June 2021, GM launched a $35 billion investment that reflects a dual carbon emission reduction strategy. It is rolling out a complete line of battery electric passenger and commercial vehicles. The funds also support development of GM Hydrotech fuel cells for trucks, trains, and aircraft. So what's the first step? Tackle trucking. Sure. Rail and shipping are natural fits for hydrogen fuel cells, experts say. Where hydrogen fits into ground transportation is less certain. Long haul trucking holds potential. Medium and heavy duty trucks consume 26% of US transportation fuel, according to the EPA. Fuel cells prove advantageous because of the energy density hydrogen provides. Yeah. They have quick refueling times and a much smaller weight penalty than battery electric vehicles. Electric vehicles weigh a ton more than ICE vehicles. Funny, isn't it? Sucking up payload capacity with heavy batteries presents a problem for long haul trucking because it reduces profits. Because of weight differences, a fuel cell truck on a 350 mile run can carry about 38,000 pounds of cargo compared with just 33,000 pounds for a battery electric truck, according to Michael Roth, executive director of North American Council for Freight Efficiency. Although it's heavier than a conventional internal combustion tractor, a 2,000 pound federal payload allowance for zero emission trucks puts a fuel cell truck's cargo capacity at par with its diesel counterpart, he said. In terms of total cost of ownership, fuel cell provider Ballard estimates battery electric trucks would cost an astounding $434,381 in regional haul scenarios. A comparable hydrogen fuel cell truck would cost $414,367, a price that's on par with diesel. A September 2021 analysis from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory presents more mixed results, which supports the idea there's room for both technologies. It suggests each powertrain may hold cost of ownership advantages in specific business scenarios and route distances. Oh, sure. Fuel prices are a substantial variable. Overall, the lab's researchers say that electric powertrains may be best in short range applications or when dwell time is not a concern. The report said both technologies could be cost competitive with diesel trucks as early as 2025. Tom Stevenson, co-founder of Pajarito Powder said, a good rule of thumb is that you'll see hydrogen fuel cells where you see diesel today and battery electric where you see gasoline, said a New Mexico hydrogen components startup backed by Hyundai Motor Group. Not everyone is convinced. When John Henry Harris co-founded medium duty truck startup Harbinger in July, 2021, he opted to start from scratch with a purpose-built vehicle. He quickly soured on hydrogen as a potential option. John Harris said, when we actually look at the maturity of the two solutions and see a order of magnitude separation, we reach the point in the past two years that we can build an electric platform without compromise. And if we want to do that with a hydrogen vehicle, we are not even close yet. Watch for more to come on hydrogen fuel cells in our next video, part two. For the moment, millions of drivers on the road are driving vehicles powered by internal combustion engines burning either gas or diesel. And this will continue to be the case for many years to come. And to all of you drivers out there who are keeping your older vehicles for longer, you are owners of vehicles which are a perfect candidate for a fuel economy boost with MPG Extreme X caps. It's simple science, but the reason X caps work to boost fuel economy so effectively is that they blow away carbon deposits and create the perfect environment for combustion in your engine. Since a brand new vehicle already has an optimized combustion chamber, a brand new cars typically don't see a MPG improvement. But if you've had your vehicle for a while and put a few miles on it, running some gas through it, which is just about everyone, yeah. your vehicle is a perfect candidate for MPG X caps. Check out this testimonial video sent to us by Bruce Hare from Pennsylvania. Hi, this is Bruce Hare from Southern Pennsylvania. I'd like to give a review of my experience with the MPG Extreme gas caps. Behind me is my 2001 Lexus RX 300. I've had it since it was new. My baseline before using the uh, X caps was 15.6 miles per gallon. Now, after the second tank, I'm at 18.8 .8 miles a gallon, which is a net 21% increase. So I've gained about 3.2 miles per gallon. Using my last odometer, since of my previous fill-up, I gained about four gallons of gasoline. 
Now here in Pennsylvania, gas is around 409, depending on where you go, could be 415. At four dollars a gallon, at four bucks, that's sixteen dollars. Now my cost for the gas caps with shipping was two dollars and nine cents each, which is about a thirteen dollars and ninety-one cent savings. Now here's the best part. This baby here is running better than it ever has before. It's actually got some pep in the step, it accelerates quicker. And we're talking about a car that's approaching 300,000 miles. So, as skeptical as I was about them, I tried them. I tell you, they work. You can't lose, folks. Gas prices are continuing to go up. So, good luck. Try the X-Caps. You won't regret it. All right. Thanks for that, Bruce. And if you'd like to have your own success story like Bruce, it's easy to order X-Caps for yourself. And since Bruce rolled the dice and elected to get the 100 X-Cap package as an ISR, We'd like to promote his link to help him, and so you can order some for yourself. It's easy to become a preferred customer. Option one is 10 X caps for $29.95 plus shipping, or option two, 30 X caps for $59.95 plus shipping. If you're choosing to just be a customer for now, you should do this second pack as a minimum in case your vehicle needs more time for the ECM to adjust to the oxygen fuel mixture. Your satisfaction is 100% guaranteed. And of course, you can benefit from wholesale pricing just like Bruce did, and that's 100 XCATs for $199.95 plus shipping. And there is also a gold package available now, which is 75 XCATs and a box of trucker crumbs, $299.95 plus shipping. And finally, for you truckers or bulk fuel users out there, a trucker's package, which is three boxes of trucker's crumbs for $339.95. One box of trucker's crumbs contains 10 vials that look like this and it will treat 1,200 gallons of fuel. And if things in the world of fuel couldn't already be bad enough, you should have seen our video on the looming diesel shortage. If you're burning diesel, you're going to need every advantage that you can get. If you have questions about the X-CAP and how it can boost the fuel economy of your vehicle or fleet of vehicles, email us at kevinthehomeworkguy at gmail.com or call text to 701-441-3399. We have a big customer database. We know how to produce the best results. And we promise you an honest, straight up answer. Remember, there's no risk involved. It's an ironclad 100% customer satisfaction guarantee. And yes, Kevin often does call people or call them back who try to reach us on the MPG line. At a minimum, you'll get a call or text from us. That's right. And as a added bonus for those of you who sign on as an ISR, I will personally contact you directly and share my cell number with you and you'll have unlimited direct help and advice from me or Liz on all your future car deals. How'd you like to have us on speed dial the next time you set foot in a dealership? That alone is worth its weight in gold. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guide channel, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. We welcome you to our family. And of course, please share our videos on social media. And thanks everyone for coming back and to all of our faithful followers and to our team of ISRs out there. You guys rock. And a special thanks to Bruce for submitting his video testimonial. Yep, that was awesome, Bruce. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.